What's up guys, it is Techie Chris here and I am back with another video. For you guys who don't know me, I am a network engineer and I have a passion for pretty much everything related to technology. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about the OSI model. I know that list of layers of the network that we learned on our early certifications, a lot of people feel like it is not valuable. A lot of people tend to learn it and then forget it because they don't think it's as valuable as it really is. But for people who are trying to break into the field of network engineering, I'm here to tell you that the OSI OSI model is one of the most important models to follow as far as troubleshooting goes and as far as learning network engineering in general goes. Currently in the field of networking or prepping to get into the field, studying for certifications like CCNA, Network Plus, and any other certifications that you need a deep understanding of the OSI model to advance then this is the video for you. When I was first studying for certifications like the Network Plus, I learned the OSI model, but I never really took into depth how important the OSI model is to day-to-day -day business operations. Now that I'm a network engineer, whenever I go to troubleshoot something on the network, I typically go through the OSI model and use the OSI model as a guide to understand what I am looking at and what needs to be troubleshooted. For those of you who don't know, the OSI model is a seven layer model that pretty much helps describe how data in a network goes through the network. The layers of the OSI model are the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the session layer, the presentation layer, and the application layer. The acronym that I like to use for remembering the OSI model is Please do not throw sausage pizza away. I got this acronym from Jason Dion. It's who I also use to pass my CompTIA Network Plus. Like I said before, a lot of people think the OSI model is just a theoretical model and it doesn't really come in handy on the job, but I'm here to completely X out that myth. So in this video, I'm going to break down the OSI model and explain how it relates to the job of a network engineer when troubleshooting. And hopefully from this video, you guys will have a better understanding of why the OSI model is important. So as most of you guys know, the first layer of the OSI model is the physical layer. This is the layer where you actually have the physical connections, like the physical cables, the ethernet cables, the fiber optic cables. On this layer, you have the patch panels and even the SFP that connects into the switches. So if you have an issue in your organization, and you need to troubleshoot, I always start with layer one. Troubleshooting steps for layer one would be things like checking if the interface that you are connected to has a link light, checking if cables are frayed or damaged, see if the device is actually even on, and pretty much just making sure that the physical hardware of the device doesn't have any damages that could be affecting the issue. Now let's move on to layer two, the data link layer. Layer two is pretty much a layer where you have everything that moves within the LAN. This is going to be your switches, your MAC addresses, things like VLANs, STP, ARP. When troubleshooting layer two issues, you will look out for things like duplicate MAC addresses, ARP issues, sometimes it could be VLAN mismatch and VLAN issues, loops, and also broadcast storms. Usually you will have to be verifying layer two issues like port channels, STP, and even trunks. Now let's move on to layer three, the network layer. Layer three, this is where you have your IP addressing, your routing. This is where you have things like OSPF and BGP. Some issues that happen on this layer is not being able to ping other hosts, routing loops, incorrect default gateway configurations, and even things like incorrect IP addresses and subnet masks. All of these things can hinder your network at the layer three level. Next, let's talk about the transport layer at layer four. In the transport layer, this is where we get into port numbers and we start messing with technologies like TCP and UDP. Sometimes a firewall might be blocking a specific port number and this is something that is on the layer 4 of the OSI model. Some other issues that can happen on the layer 4 level of the OSI model is slow file transfers and anytime that you can ping a specific host but you cannot connect to the services that that host is supposed to be providing. A lot of the times issues on this layer can be fixed with the correct QoS configurations and pretty much just making sure that the access control list and firewalls are accurate and up to date. Now we are on to layer 5 of the OSI model and this is going to be the session layer. This pretty much manages the sessions between between systems. This is pretty much be any time a connection just drops out of the random or when the application logs you out before you are ready for it. It might be a good idea to check your session management configurations. If you are dropping connection, check on layer five. Next, we are going to talk about the presentation layer of the OSI model, which is number six. 
This is pretty much anything that deals with SSL, TLS, and pretty much any type of encryption that happens. If you're having issues where your encrypted websites aren't loading, that is going to be a layer six issue. Anytime that you have certificate issues and any SSL handshake failure, layer six is going to be the cause of most of those issues. Last but not least, we are going to look at layer seven of the OSI model, which is the application layer. This is pretty much where you, the user, is going to be interacting with the PC. These are things like DNS and HTTP DPS. Anytime your website returns with a 500 error or your DNS is just not working properly, more than likely this is going to be a layer 7 application issue. Sometimes it takes a lot to get these issues resolved and sometimes it can be something just as easy as clearing your cache on your PC. So before I let you guys go, I'm going to give you a real life scenario of how the OSI model would come in handy when troubleshooting a situation. So someone in your organization comes to you and say, hey, I cannot load this web page and I need your help. And you as the engineer, you want to follow the OSI model to figure out why this web page is not loading. Here are the steps that you would take. You will start at the physical layer. Is the cable even plugged into the server or the switch where this is supposed to be terminating it? You would check if the link lights are on. You would check if the ethernet cables are messed up or maybe the device doesn't even have power. At layer one, this is where you're going to pretty much check all of this. If everything checks out there, we can move into layer two of the OSI model. This is going to be the data link layer. One of the main questions on this layer is wondering if that device is showing up on the switch's MAC address table. Checking things like this and also checking if that that device is configured with the appropriate VLAN or great steps to take at layer two. Just like I said, if everything checks out there, you can then move into layer three. Here you can start by checking if the device is configured with the appropriate IP address. You can also make sure that there are no IP conflicts and all other layer three technologies are working like DHCP. After you've checked that, let's now go to layer four, the transport layer. Making sure that the port that the web page uses is open is crucial. Websites are usually going to use port 80 or port 443 and it's important to make sure that the firewall is not blocking traffic from either of these ports then we can move on to the session layer this is where we will determine if the session is being dropped too soon or if the session is even starting up to begin with many applications and web pages will fail if the session tokens are not exchanged properly make sure that you check for any session timeout or even authentication misfires now let's troubleshoot layer six the presentation layer in this layer it would be a great idea to check if tls or ssl are actually the reasons for this failure if https web pages are what's failing it could potentially be an issue Issue with the encryption of that web page then finally the application layer we need to verify that the web server is actually even working we'll take notes of things and events that have happened like when was the last time that that web page even did work maybe it's a possibility that the DNS server is not working we'll try different websites we'll try different browsers and we'll just try different things to get that website working in a different way but overall you can kind of see how all of these steps lead up to each other if one step doesn't work then go to the next step but by following this model of the OSI model you will eventually find the resolution to your problem and even if you don't find a resolution to your problem you will find what is causing your problem but yeah that is it for me in this video I really do appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video OSI model is a major part of my job when it comes to troubleshooting a lot of things. Everything from outages to even getting reports of Wi-Fi slowness inside of the offices. I use the OSI model to troubleshoot and, and pretty much fix most issues that I deal with. But thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate you guys staying to the end. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop those down in the comments for me. But that is it for me and I'm out of here.